Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted unto you, and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. One big key in my life. Show me a man that is broken and contrite before God. I show you a man whose rising cannot be stopped by any cause, any gate, whatever it is. He says, search me, O God, and know my heart like a man knows his wife. Know my heart. He said, try me and know my thoughts. 24. He said, and see if there be any wicked way and lead me to the way everlasting that's a man before god that's that's the posture that can bring the presence of god attract the presence of god to a man every time we stand before god believing lord why are you using this man there are people who see certain of our orthodox pastors and they stand as young people full of themselves and say this this reverend this man he doesn't even speak english well why is god using him why is the man rising whereas i am here i'm a fasting giant i have this knowledge i have that i have this and yet the ministry does not grow do you know why because that man is not sound in the world and he knows it so he goes to god and say lord if you depend on my teaching these members will not grow i come to you with my limited revelation can your grace speak for me and god says the little prayer you pray for the members i will amplify it because it's coming from a broken heart let me tell you pride kills when you see people arrogant for a long time they have left the secret place I can know whether you are one who is of the secret place by the consistency of self-glorification and pride if up to one month in your life passes without you seeing a need to spend time with God alone it's a sign your life is under attack hear me if you're a man of God here listen twice don't be carried away by some of these little accolades in ministry Oh, they invited me here. I went to this country. A senator met with me. He said, you are the greatest man of God in the world. While they are saying that, keep your ears to the throne. Lord, what are you saying? In the midst of that club, God can say, finish that meeting and let's meet. Where we usually meet. You will enter there and God will never talk to you about a senator. God will say, I'm already seeing. There is... I, I want to bless you with 100 million but there's, there's something I'm seeing that 100 million would destroy you and he said, God me I just a senator I would have prophesied to God say keep quiet I am God brokenness many of you stopped growing spiritually for a long time you didn't backslide but you didn't grow either because you are doing a lot of corporate things retreat now is, is a language many people don't even know what a retreat is they think retreat is fasting so they just close their door and fast and answer calls all through from morning till night gone are the days when people lock themselves and say sorry you are not going to see me for the next two days please hear me god is speaking to us if you don't practice retreats you will not survive the darkness of today it's true no matter who you are retreats Retreat is not when you gas out spiritually and you see that Kai, no grace is working in your life. No, you must find time. I'm busy, I'm busy is a trap of the devil. No, if police arrest you now, you are not too busy to attend to the people. If an ambrober detains you somewhere, you will say, ambrober, I'm busy, come the day I'm free. The power of brokenness. Have you come to a position where the secret place has broken you? Read you off your pride and everything. You know there is no brokenness by how we speak. Uh, the other day, someone just called me and is that I don't want to talk too much, but ah, at my level now, you know, then we now wrap it up with a religious all glory to God. It's a lie. It's a lie. 
all glory to God first comes from the heart before the mouth hallelujah is God speaking to us tonight? some of us need to find time just by this message God is telling you I love you but you have you have worshipped me corporately but that fellowship we used to have something is wrong return to it oh return to it return to it that fellowship is not there again even when you didn't have money for hotel you were having time for God now that you can pay for any hotel or any place to stay with God you are no longer spending time we only run to God when there is trouble then we just run and say God have come again is it not you you are God I'm a man but let's not no Lord I come to you I stand before you and I know that it is by your mercy and by your grace Lord I thank you David a man after not God's money you can be after God's money you can be after God's anointing you can be after God's fame but a man after God's heart please I like us to write it if you are writing I return to the place of brokenness genuine brokenness it will show in our conversations when we are broken you always acknowledge that I am what I am by the grace of God there are arrogant statements especially from we men of God that are testaments of our absenting ourselves from the secret place number two please take it down for me the secret place is the place where we find the mercy of god ah. in recent times i have caught a revelation of god's mercy in a way and a manner i wish i knew this 10 15 years ago not that i don't know about the mercy of god but the idea many people have about the mercy of God is the reason why they never at all access his mercy. Do you know that the mercy of God is one of the major keys that many people are looking for in this life? Not even favor, mercy first. Our idea about mercy is that mercy is for sinners. So we pride ourselves that I'm not a sinner. I don't need mercy, Lord. What I need is revelation. <clears throat> the place of mercy. Psalm 86 verse 5. We'll read a few scriptures quickly. Psalm 86 verse 5. We find mercy in the secret place. For thou, O Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy. To who? Not to all believers. Please help me. Plenty us in mercy unto them that sin, unto them that fast, unto them that call upon you. If you call upon him, he knows you are calling upon his mercy. The mercy of God. The mercy of God. You call upon the mercy of God and see him move beyond your faith level. Call upon the mercy of God and see him move beyond everything in your life. When you invoke the mercy of God, he moves because of his, his son, Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with you again. It has everything to do with There are people who are prosperous even though there is still a curse in their life. That curse has not been broken but they are still prosperous because their language all the way is messy. As the arrows that fly by day is coming, they have no knowledge of spiritual intelligence but mercy. Please help that lady. The mercy of God. Oh, 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 oh.
Lamentations chapter 3 and verse 22. Lamentations 3 and 22. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not what? Consumed. Consumed. Because his compassions fail not. That means even when I didn't know the spiritual laws that would have kept me, I still saw results that were not accounted to my knowledge spiritually. And later now that I know that this is the law responsible for this result, I'm wondering why I was getting the result anyway. Because by the time I started getting the result, I was not yet obeying that spiritual law. I didn't understand the mystery of exemption. I didn't understand the mystery of praise. Yet the rewards of exemption were following me. And the Bible tells me the secret that it is because in your ignorance, you were able to provoke the mercy of God if God were to wait for us to obey every single spiritual law allocated for our victory some of us would taste victory when we are 97 years because our rate of assimilation compared to our need for the result is very low so he introduces his mercy I know you are you are you based on the way I deal with people if you if you don't tithe consistently but something has happened in your life and i noticed for four months you have not been tithing ordinarily based on the terms of justice you should not receive this reward coming but you were wise enough immediately you called my mercy he overrides the four months not tithing and then he doesn't justify you but he gives you this to show that i am god he said because his compassion failed not do you know what his compassion is? The ability to be touched with the feelings of your infirmity. He is aware that you are a man. Ah. So, when God gives Sam an instruction and says, Sam, remove your suit and sew it. And then for some reason, Sam is struggling. Maybe because when he grew up, he was taking care of all his family members and the little time now he's been able to do something for himself god is now saying to show god knows it's not easy because he has gone through pains and so when he disobeys god god doesn't say you disobey me i will judge you compassion makes him to examine the condition and say no if i were sam what would i have done no i i shift beyond I, I'm not justifying this, but Sam, I have been touched with the feelings of your limitation. I still qualify you. This is God. Oh, 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 oh. I started experiencing in my life before I ever understood the spiritual principles that control that result not many men of God will tell you what I'm telling you most people will make it look like all their result is a direct reflection of their total obedience is a lie no how many of you men of God have gone to preach and you were too tired to pray you just lay down open your eyes and it was time for the vigil there are times that I'm so tired, I leave Koinonia here. And before I get home, it's past one. I have to leave five o'clock to catch the flight. I'm there, there is a delay. I'm arriving and all kinds of things. And the meeting is already on. And sometimes all I do is just lie down on my bed. And I say, Lord, I know this part of you. It is your mercy that I need in this meeting. And all of a sudden, that anointing comes again. I know that the angel of his presence is with me within that room. Not because I, I honestly took out the time to pray i will be lying to tell you i prayed eight nine hours for every sermon for the results you get it's not true there are times that all i did it was in the plane i was sleeping i didn't even know until we landed and got up dragged myself like that went to dress 
and there I'm going in the meeting and everybody has been fasting for two weeks apostle is coming and you who is preaching you have not fasted you are tired is you stagger yourself on stage but suddenly I know what this thing is so <laughs> Sirkin Salama, Sirkin Al Janna. Psalm 25, verse 6 to 7. While I was studying this, I stumbled across that scripture and it blessed me in no small way. He said, Remember, O Lord, thy tender mercies and loving kindness, for they have been ever of old. Next verse. He said, remember not the sins of my youth. He said, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake. Listen, there are many of us that if you pray this prayer, many parents today are suffering the consequences of the sins of their youth. They did something when they were young and it followed them forever, forever. And their children's children, they are not exactly under a curse. It's just the rod of judgment that is upon them. He said, remember not the sins of my youth. There are people here before you knew God, before you knew anything about God, you even came from an abused family. So there was no hope of knowing anything about God. You almost shredded your life into pieces. It was even when you came to university, you got born again. But there is a backload of a lot of spiritual laws that have been intertwined together. Remember, not oh God, the sins of my youth, nor my... Now listen, there is a difference between sin and transgression. Let's assume you lived a very nice life. What of transgression? Violations of ordinances. Whether through ignorance or disobedience. Lord, remember not that in 1995 I should be tightened. I was criticizing men of God. In, 20, in 2000, I should be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I said, God forbid, I blasphemed against the Holy Spirit. Remember not my transgression. He said, according to thy mercy, not according to thy wisdom, according to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake. These are mysteries in the Bible. That's why some people will keep getting angry with a lot of people. You will see a woman. The woman is not so wise. She's not so intelligent. She's not so learned. She has been a widow since the children were five years. But you see help coming from everywhere. Mama, what is the secret? She'll say, all I know is one song. One song of mercy that I sing all the time. And then another arrogant person, I went to Yale, I went to this, I went to that. In fact, don't worry, I know that they will elect me. It's just that I'm being patient until this guy becomes president. The guy becomes president for eight years and goes, you are nothing for you. If you can learn to provoke God's mercy, when blind Bartimeo, Jesus was passing Jericho for the last time, he didn't say, Jesus, I am obedient to, oh, I've been listening to your message. Jesus would have said, they're not obedient enough. You only judge disobedience when your obedience is complete, not around. He said, thou son of David, have mercy. Hold on. Was Jesus the son of David? No. The son of David was Solomon. So you will say you are calling Solomon. Oh, don't call me. Solomon will come and help you. But he knew something. Thou son of David, have mercy upon me. And then he turned. He said, what do I do? He said that I will receive my sight. The mercy of God. Many of us come from families whose parents were wicked to others. And if God is to, no matter how innocent you are, the wickedness that some of our loved ones, some of our loved ones had jobs, they stop young people from rising. 
they are carrying on their head the woes and the pain of bleeding people forget that they repented later on it will take the mercy of God to advocate for them oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah. When Jesus appeared to me, I would be lying if I was, I, I always seek the Lord. But at that time, I was not on any special fasting program. I was not on any special word program. I, I'm not sure I was even studying my Bible. Just lying down quietly. And then he came. What brought him? Mercy. People ask me today, I want to see Jesus. I tell them, I don't know how, I don't know how to help you see Jesus. I know how to help you love God. But to see Jesus, the equation, even me, I don't understand the full. I just know some variables. Nobody knows all the equation. What do you add plus what equal to seeing Jesus? You add it and see whether he will visit you this night. Because you can sit down here crying for an encounter. And Jesus will leave you and go under the bridge in Kaduna. And wait for someone by 1 a.m. who is busy insulting the stupid men of God. There comes Jesus. He says, I am Jesus. And you are saying, with, oh, I'm, I'm here fasting. Jesus, this is not fair. I thought you said you reward those who diligently seek you. Because in the midst of that, he's ranting. Compassion is interpreting what he's saying. He's not really insulting God. He's saying, I'm a confused young man looking for help. God hears the voice of your mouth, but he hears the voice of your heart. That's why you can be saying stupid things and God is answering something else. Because while your mouth is saying something, your heart is saying something. Years ago, I was speaking to one guy who, I don't know, the, the guy smokes all kinds of things. And I sat down. I was, remember him? Remember that gentleman, Jimmy? Very funny guy. He was under, I think he was under the bridge in Kwangila, Kwangila Bridge. This guy came to be part of us and within less than two weeks, he started entering dimensions of encounter with Jesus. There's somebody that was a, I mean, you look at his life as if there is nothing. But in the midst of that, what his heart was saying is, Lord, I need you. Whereas you physically, your mouth is saying, Lord, I need you. But your heart is saying, Lord, I'm fine by myself. God does not just listen to your mouth. Your heart too has a voice. That's why he said, try my heart, oh. Lord, give me money. And your heart is saying, Lord, I'm on a revenge mission. I need to prove to people I'm not a failure. And God says, your heart and your mouth is conflicting. But someone else can say, I will never tight. And what the heart is saying is, Lord, I'm frustrated. If this thing is real, reveal to me. Number three. The secret place is the place where we find rest and comfort. Rest and comfort. Oh, how you need this in this troubled world. Let me give you an advance notice. Everyone you know has the potential of disappointing you. Everyone. I think it's a revelation you need to note today. Everyone born by a woman, born again or not, has the potential to disappoint you disappoint you in business disappoint you in ministry disappoint you in marriage disappoint you in every regard when people say a pastor disappointed me i thought he would make me a deacon i've been there for him he didn't make me a deacon i i thought i thought i'm not the last but what are you saying that's a man for you but there is a place that god provided where the weary can find rest and comfort you're a man of god listen to this i was sharing with a dear friend today on phone in the afternoon and he was so weary and tired spiritually and i was a distant friend somewhere and i was just advising him i say you see this work that we do ba we look busy but our lives are very lonely you need to know how to find comfort in god otherwise if you can't find comfort in god you will start finding comfort in movies you will start finding comfort somewhere you will now i'm not saying it's wrong 
one day you go to football viewing center where someone that's behind you will go and kill you there have you learned to find rest and comfort in god that's why some of us get into the mistake because of the obsession to share your problem with someone the pain overwhelms you you don't choose who whoever is there for you emotionally at that time you run your mouth and tell people intricate details about your life about your family when you are done with the gist you don't know what to do with yourself again because you have messed up your entire life they used to respect your father and your mother until one day you open your mouth and told the people wrongly do you know that i'm not the first child of my father i i it's a long story uh my my father pregnanted one zimbabwean woman 10 years before i came and the person you are telling is not even matured spiritually it's just that your heart was looking for the secret place and because you didn't have it you had to search for someone be careful this is particularly for ladies because ladies you are designed to be expressive you always want to be heard be careful you would destroy a lot of good things in your life there are people who sat down in restaurants talking about the contract that their husbands got and the person sitting at the other side of the table was an arm robber the guy had finished eating but he refused to stand up and go because she was sharing him god is faithful oh sorry i'm meeting you for the first time am i talking too much and then instead of the friend to say yes they say no 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 i'm okay then you continue talking the god is faithful oh as we, as we as he even said he's buying a jeep for me as i'm talking to you now there's twenty thousand dollars on our bed eh? the way the bed is it's a six by eight seven and under you know that kind of bed while you are talking the arm robber is nodding i say in fact i didn't even tell you where we live do you know that we moved recently you know that that one white house and in the night that man is just there and comes with accuracy and looks for you and say remember you were describing your house for me lie down and it shoots and kills everybody don't allow your mouth destroy your destiny are we together there are men of god who carried their church problems out of pressure and took it to politicians instead of taking it to god sir just to let you know forget all this one that we laugh on tv oh. the truth is that the bills that are on our head we need 200 million by friday and the senator said oh really ah uh -uh. um and you always look sharp like this <laughs> that's how we do it is your industry and all of a sudden one day you go somewhere and say all of you lift up your hands and the senator is in a beer parlor watching you as they look at these idiots the other day i was with this man and he was begging me for 200 million because only god should have heard that you left him in search for what only his secret place can give you are we learning something tonight hmm. the secret place is a place of rest and comfort psalm 27 please media help us first psalm 27 from verse 13 to 14 we'll read four serious scripture psalm 27 verse 13 to 14 he said i had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. 14. Wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Be of good courage and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say on the Lord. No matter who you are in life, because of disappointed expectations, because of our goals and our dreams not happening when and how we want it to be there are times that you can be weary as a man of god you trust god for increase in membership you are pouring your heart do you know one of the most heartbreaking thing for any man of god is to truly pour your heart to members and people and not see them growing at the rate that matches your sacrifice except you are not an honest man of god it will pain you sometimes when i get text messages from people i truly tears fill my eyes i just can't, because it's painful the time it takes to prepare just one sermon you see that and then all of a sudden very unwise decisions that come from those things and your heart just bleeds are we together at that time you will be tempted to call a friend call somebody or whatever confident now you must learn to wait on the lord 
Lord, I bring before you these church bills. Lord, I love you, but the bills in my family are almost killing me. The bills in my church are almost killing me. Lord, I come to you because nobody can understand me. Nobody understands me. They all think I'm a wicked woman. But Lord, you know my heart. I come to you. And the Lord says, find rest. This is where you can be understood. It is powerful to be understood. Unfortunately, life does not give you that kind of opportunity with men. It's difficult for men to understand you. But there is one, there is a place, brothers and sisters, that you can go where you know God understands you. Hallelujah. Wait thou upon the Lord. Psalms 91 and verse 4 to 5. Then we look at 62 and verse 1 to 5. If God, is God speaking to you tonight? Psalm 91 and verse 4. He said, he shall cover thee. Look at this. Come. He gives you a picture of a hen or an eagle. Is that true? You know how eagles protect their young ones. They spread their feather and cover them while they are under. They just cover them. In other words, let, let me see, let me see the, the animal, let me see the, 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 the predator in the wilderness that will come near you. I know you are fragile in yourself, but I cover you. He said he shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. Then his truth shall be your shield and buckler. Have you experienced that dimension of God? that people can be insulting you many of us have not risen to places you know for some of us who god has granted grace in ministry small it's painful to pour your heart there are times that you can do everything you are doing and all of a sudden someone may be listening to a colonial message and say all these pastors all they are looking for is your money i don't trust any pastor in nigeria they are all stupid people they all use your money it's all church money you see all of them dressing it's all your money they are using when you hear that kind of thing no matter how you are sometimes as a human being it can touch your heart because you know you are sincere but there's no one to explain to and god doesn't even allow you to explain anything to anybody at such times his presence and he says my son i'm the only person on earth you owe explanation and if i've credited you it doesn't matter who and what they think comfort and rest someone looked at me and said apostle how do you get motivated you are always happy i said you think so if i if what is on my head comes upon you you will collapse physically immediately not after a few weeks immediately 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 success is a burden it's a burden you should pray to be prepared before you pray it comes to you are we together yes success I think it was last year i went to buy suya in the night i was just playing a song and someone just knocked the door of my vehicle i just went down and then i i looked at the lady and she was jumping she said, ah, apostle you buy suya i mean that's my life what 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 sort of embarrassment is that that that's the burden of being successful what what is what is wrong with suya is suya tobacco just that i stroll in the night to just make myself happy you see when you become great everything about your life is everybody's business and it can be a burden it can be a burden sometimes people will call you in the night and you say you are sleeping you say i'm surprised you are sleeping look at that kind of stupid text you see that and it can make you feel guilty sometimes you will think it will enter you but sometimes you feel guilty because truly that time you may have planned to pray it's just that sleep took over you the people make you feel bad and you stand up saying because of this i must go for three days dry to prove there's, there's nothing to prove my brother go to the secret place and find rest and find comfort many of us don't know how to find rest in god 
we don't know how to find comfort in God that's why we find comfort in things that's why we find comfort in people you find comfort in a friend that disappoints you you move to another one that disappoints you then you go to a pastor that disappoints you then you go to a film that disappoints you then you go to a drink that disappoints you then you go to a club that disappoints you then you say I hate life like Solomon you now say vanity upon vanity all is I have learned to find comfort in his presence I remember one time when the crowds were increasing here I was concerned about the rain and I said Lord what do we do what do we do there are several people coming you know several people and they will keep coming what do we do that time sometimes because the venue may not be available uh, the alternatives we used to use then were very inconveniencing I had to go to God look at Moses do you know what happens when you are a leader people expect you to have answer to everything even what they don't have answer for they are very okay with themselves they pity and excuse themselves but they look at you and say you should have an answer for this they looked at moses and said moses you don't know also if you don't find a way of parting this red sea we are taking it gently now we will butcher you here make swords from the gold we took from egypt and kill you here and and put your monument and moses said just take it easy wise man he ran to the presence of god lord what do i do i need i need comfort these people are wearing me and he says stand still he said take your rod go and tell the people to move forward learn to draw strength in his presence learn to retreat when people look at you and do all kinds of things you have neighbors that are nagging and troublesome you have people in your office who are always misunderstanding what you are doing you have people who will bribe and cheat and live their lives anyhow and you have made up your mind that there's no bribing there's no cheating if it's 10 naira for the organization i'm returning it and they look at you and say holy holy stupid person are we all not chopping somehow in nigeria even that company said is it not with bribe they started this company and they try to make you feel guilty at that point my soul wait thou upon the lord wait thou upon the lord psalm 62 verse 1 to 5 quickly if we're unable to finish we'll continue next week psalm some of you this message you don't need it now just keep rising the time will come you will need this message daily you will search for this message and sit down and weep while you hear right now you are not sowing any seed but people are giving you their harvest so you think it's your faith that is working a time will come you will be exposed to the harsh sun the reality of working these kingdom principles then it will down on you you know sometimes you go for meetings and when a man of god is preaching you see pastors crying standing up and you'll be wondering why are they like this because they they are closest to that reality when they say bills that is not captured in your mind because someone else is awake while you are sleeping the time will come when you will be awake where you should be awake and that's when you will find out that someone can have a bed but not have sleep the situations in your life will wake you up say are you joking you want to sleep when we are here verse 1 to 5 truly my soul waited upon God he said from him cometh my salvation next verse to 5 he only is my rock and my salvation he is my defense ah i shall not be greatly moved verse 3 how long will ye imagine mischief against a man talking to enemies now ye shall be slain all of you as a bowing wall shall ye be and as a tottering fence for they only consult to cast him down from his excellency it says they delight in lies they bless with their mouth but they curse inwardly this is a picture of the tragedy of greatness that when people become great this is what happens to them men can say well done you are a man of god but in their heart they say we pray that one day you will have an accident to prove that this faith is nothing the bible says to bring him down from his excellency then he says my soul wait thou only upon god he said for my expectation is from him are you blessed tonight you must learn to wait on him for comfort instead of running around and harassing people listen every time situations overwhelm you keep quiet 
go to the secret place play a song like this or play worship i think media worship, worship team you people should do these kinds of things you just have 30 minutes of strong instrumentation like this for people to soak in because there are times you can't sing i wish i can tell you is every time you can dance dance where is the energy from i there's a lady she may be in koinonia here they are burying her mother on um today's sunday i think on tuesday or wednesday this lady's mother died like 10 days ago she calls me almost 10 times every day crying and say apostle i believe my mother can come back to life that my mother said she will live long my mother was a god-fearing woman you know how difficult it is for a man of god especially when you walk in the anointing to respond to people like that and after praying and fasting when they came to carry the mother's body i think from shika or so to travel with her she kept crying and telling them that they, they should leave her her mother will come no i say small girl we know you are this that lady can get into prostitution immediately because of anger and say god failed me and then someone will run his big mouth and say something at that point what that lady needs is the secret place there is no amount of counseling you bring that will touch that lady are we together it's true what happens when a man of god and his wife is unable to have a child what happens when a man of god who is anointed gets married and then they find out he's impotent what happens when a man of god's family is in shambles he labors and gives birth to children he's pouring his heart to bless the world and all the children daughters getting pregnant sons are into drugs it's difficult for that man to stand and preach because he has to continue to be a preacher of righteousness but someone says don't bless us with this your faith thing if you know god why is it that your daughter why is it that your son has not been able to do anything brothers and sisters there are times that life can push you that even the strongest of us will need to lean to something other than you at that point find rest oh my soul find rest find rest in his presence it's true there are times that the leader send me text messages sir we need to make a decision now this is what we need to do this is what we have to do this is what we have to do sometimes i think it was in the school of ministry or so um a few days or last week i was told that while lectures was going on someone's bike was stolen also very funny incidents now when you hear such kinds of things as a man of god it can touch you have you learned to rest in god i have learned to draw strength in his presence we wait on you lord we wait on you we wait on you lord we wait on you we wait on you we wait on you lord we wait on you we wait on you Lord, we wait on you. Number four, the secret place is a place of revival and restoration. Write it down. The secret place is a place of revival and restoration. Psalm 23 from verse 2 and 3, please. Restoration of fire, restoration of hunger, restoration of love for God restoration of values restoration of your physical energy psalm 23 from verse 2 he maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters verse 3 he restores my soul he restores my soul he restores my soul there are times you need restoration you need restoration of fire you need restoration of grace psalm 143 verse 11 psalm 143 verse 11 a place of revival quicken me O lord for thy name's sake for thy righteousness sake bring my soul out of trouble 
Mm. The prayers that great men pray quicken my soul lord revive me revive me my the situations in my life i can feel life going out of me physically revive me revive me oh god revive me i need a reviver lord the ministry burden is overwhelming me i can't pray again i can't fast again there is a conference coming and lord the finances is not there the energy is not there just when i want to prepare my son is causing trouble just when i want to love god one of the sons that i've so labored and raised is now disappointed revive me lord i feel life going out of me you need revival revive my fire lord i used to be a prayer warrior i used to pray for two hours three hours all of a sudden as soon as i graduated now it's three years after graduation lord i'm surprised no visions again no fire no nothing i'm surprised i misquote scriptures i cannot even Appa! no i used to wake up 2 a.m every day 12 o'clock every day now in two weeks I've not even called on your name. Revive me. A secret place. It's a place where men cry. They come to him and say, Lord, revive me. Revive me. Hmm. Revelation chapter 2, 4 to 5. Revelation chapter 2. This was the Lord speaking to the seven churches. He said, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against you. What do I have against you? He said, because thou hast left thy first love. This is a word from the Lord to many of us here. Not thou hast stopped loving me. Thou hast left your first love. I like many of us to just be sensitive to what the spirit is doing i already sense the anointing but there are many of us the way you started with god is not the way you are going now it's impossible for a whole day that you will not open your bible you will not read but right now you don't even know where the bible is that's the truth you love god you are born again but the fire has gone you may even be a preacher there's no week that you will not fast at least one day but right now six months gluttony has eaten up your fire quench the fire on the coals that the lord would need to pick those tongues of fire again from the throne and touch your heart and touch your hand and touch your lips return to your first love return to your first love return to your first love god is speaking to us return to your first fire return to your first appetite for spiritual things you used to buy at least a book every month right now it's more than two years the only books you have are the ones that are left there you are not interested again you have all kinds of devotionals you have all kinds of things there are many believers that need to return to their first love Is God speaking to us tonight? Return to your first love. And you return by going back to the secret place. Do you know sometimes what God does for me is that I can sit down like this quietly and he begins to play before me the visions of my yesterday, yesteryears. All of a sudden I see myself in the night when I used to pray. I see myself studying. I see those things and they bring a fresh energy fresh energy to me many of us have lost visions no vision you dream you sleep for eight hours you don't see anything tied to your destiny something is wrong yahweh yahweh hey, hey, hey. help me sing yahweh yahweh
number five the secret place is a place of illumination is where the secrets of destiny is revealed to men the secret place is where you find the secret of your destiny you will never find it in a book you may read it in a book but the secret place is where the blueprints the mysteries of your destiny are unveiled to you Yahweh, Yahweh. Listen, it was in the secret place God gave me this formula that the string must always be played while I teach. He said, I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. I didn't get it from a book. It was in the secret place many years ago. He said, your anointing is tied to the atmosphere of worship. That every time the mystery is prayed, the spirit of prophecy will come upon you. The secret place. Many of you are in one position in destiny. There is no, you don't know what else to do. Because the secret place is where the blueprint, the strategy for your destiny is revealed. Listen, that it worked for brother A does not mean it will work for you. You must go to the secret place. Lord, what is my destiny about? Open this thing. What is the key to my anointing? I know I'm anointed, but how do I open it? Why do I stand in a meeting and not see your power flow? Sometimes it happens. I'm not sure. I try to copy this man of God. I try to do this. What is the key? What is the key? What is the key? How do I know this anointing is in a place? How do I know what you want? Daniel chapter 2. We are reading from verse 14 to 22. Then we'll jump to verse 28. A king sleeps in the night and has a strange dream. And the king is angry. If no one can tell me the dream and the interpretation, I will kill everybody. And here comes Daniel. Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Ariok, the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. People were about to die because there was no strategy. Next verse. 16 we're reading to 22 then daniel went in listen and desired of the king that he would give him what time it's not that it cannot be found give me time it looks like my life is not making progress it's like there is no way out i don't conclude on me yet give me somebody prophesied to someone say give me time it looks like i'm confused I've been going around in circles and nothing is happening. Give me. It looks like God called me, but the anointing is not yet speaking. He said, give me time. Something is about to be revealed in the altar of fellowship that will bring fire on my life. I see it in dreams, but it doesn't happen in my meetings. I've seen prosperity, but what is the secret? He says that he would give him time and that he would show Guarantee, if you give me time, I will prove you wrong. You called me a failure, give me time, I will prove you wrong. You called me barren, give me time, I will prove you wrong. You called me a failure, my father called me a failure, give me time, I will prove you wrong. Listen, don't let no arrogant person look at your life today and conclude on you. Anytime anybody talks nonsense, don't argue. Give me time i said i was called into the ministry of wealth and abundance and he said with this 200 naira shoe he said don't worry just give me time something will be shown me in the secret place i will do business with god in the secret place that will shut people down let me tell you this for those who have been here in this ministry for a long time i said this thing many years ago you see that i said this thing many years ago that's why the name started eternity network international right from when from a, a cave somewhere with a bag because i saw it 
I knew that a time will come. It will be a privilege for kings and presidents to hold your hand. Give me time. It doesn't look like it. Give me time. Between now and then, a mystery will be revealed. Brothers and sisters, when you see a man rising by a technology you don't understand, he used time to buy mysteries in the spirit. Time is currency. We can use it and do business with God and receive the mysteries of our destiny in exchange. 17. Then Daniel went to where? He went to his house. Just like everyone went to their own house and made the king the thing known to Ananiah and so on and so forth. 18. That they would desire what? Mercies of the God of heaven. You now see our mystery again. Concerning what? It's a secret. Wealth is a secret. Lord, why is this thing not working in our family? It's a secret. This anointing, as open as you see, there is more to it than what your eyes see. There are secrets. There are secrets to life. It's the one you carry that will help you command life. There are secrets to favor. It says, and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men in Babylon. 19. Hallelujah. 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 Then, the secret was revealed to Joshua Selman in a night vision. It says, and Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Listen, there are people here. What you are doing is true. You are called. But you will not get there the way you are approaching it. Your call is genuine. But there is no secret. Nothing has been given to you. God gave me the secret of not the general church growth. The church growth for koinonia. It's a secret. It's a secret. It's not charms that is bringing people. It's a secret. It's a mystery. We trade mysteries in the kingdom. You will look at it like this and not see where the equation adds up. But you ask the devil find out the devil that will stop people from coming it's a mystery whatever mystery brings you somewhere keeps you there it's a mystery then the secret was revealed to daniel in a night vision daniel blessed the god of heaven we are reading to 22 then daniel answered and said listen blessed be the name of god forever and ever for wisdom and might are his and he changed the times and the seasons he removed kings and set up kings he giveth wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them who know understanding 22 he revealed the deep and secret things he knoweth what it is in darkness and the light dwelleth with him 28 verse 28 i thank thee and praise thee, O God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known to me now what we desire of thee. For thou hast now made unto us the king's matter. A matter that does not concern you, but by the mystery of the secret place, God gives you something. Great men, our fathers of faith in this nation, they will tell you they found secrets. When they started, people said, don't mind them, it's five years. Now they are going as if the devil doesn't exist. I've passed redemption camp a number of times. And I am amazed at how people leave Lagos around and come to this forest. I've been to Canaan land altar. I've been to almost, almost all the prayer grounds from MFM to, to living faith to to redeemed to four square is amazing almost all of them can be holding programs concurrently simultaneously and it's all packed full to the outside same mysteries listen when you hold the mysteries of the kingdom i pity whoever just thinks you are joking it's not pride you will play life like a chess but there is a god in heaven that revealed what please i want to comfort you concerning your business concerning your career there is a god oh, in heaven and the bible says he has the ability to reveal secrets 
my life is full of this kind of experiences where God comes to me and says this is it I give you a blueprint I give you a secret and make known unto the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days thy dream and the visions of thy head are these and he began to tell him revelation let's take one last verse and we're done for today Jesus Psalm 25 verse 4 to 5 Psalm 25 verse 4 to 5 and then we'll pray very touching scripture let's read it one to read four to five it says show me thy ways O Lord teach me thy paths next verse lead me in thy truth and teach me for thou art the God of my salvation because I'm aware you can do this what do I do on thee do I wait how long say retreat all day not part of the day all day because I want you to teach me something I want you to guide me so I wait all day not half day there are retreats that are half day two hours a proper full retreat is a complete day from the rising of the sun to the going down you are in his presence Lord I stay I know you will come six hours he has not come you are still worshiping sitting like a madman eight hours you've not had anything it's just general scriptures of comfort i will lead you where you will go you just be patient nine hours he's still there and all of a sudden late into the night you are sitting like a madman and say what am i doing here then he comes in his majesty when he comes you know he's there all of a sudden the climate changes his majesty is coming to your room he says what have you been asking me about this is for your destiny come let me show you and he takes you in the spirit of the lord opens a bible you have been reading every day but this time he's the one who opens it this is your destiny this is it this is what to do about your finances when you do this they will attack you here do this one do this these are the keys go and he leaves you get up from that vision and say where are the devils they come like before but you rise by a mystery and they say what lifted you the secrets of the lord we don't do business in this kingdom by bold face you would die like a chicken the mysteries of the kingdom listen there's there's a woman now is I'm just waiting I, I trust that they would finish I think I sent you the text a miracle happened just between yesterday and today a doctor I, I don't know if it's Shika here he was trained in ABU someone died this morning um, now we don't talk a lot about all these kinds of things they were in the surgical room with the lady operating for what I don't know and then I don't know what happened and the person just died like that he was trained in abu here but i think it's another hospital and they were all confused because the lady said according to the doctor he said they be i sent you the text and a number of people here that they begged the lady said please make sure i come alive and the lady just died like that just died and the doctor sent me a text i think it was around maybe afternoon and said this is the situation and the family members are sitting somewhere just waiting for the report and he said honestly apostle you have to help us this is a difficult situation this girl has died they checked after a long time i said are you a doctor i replied him back are you a doctor he said yes i'm certified i'm not he said he was doing the surgery with um, some other senior colleagues i said Tor, what do you want now he said apostle we can't tell this family this lady has died and i said okay the anointing of the spirit just came upon me in a very strange way and then i sent a text it's still in my phone I sent a text I said in the name of Jesus I called back your life I said they should take the phone and place it on the person and then the doctor foolishly just did it like that help her please immediately he placed that phone after a few minutes all of a sudden from the gates of death this girl just jumped back the text is still in my phone Yahweh Yahweh
Stop here for tonight. Listen. What you call greatness in life is a function of these realities accessed by the power of the secret place. If the devil robs you from the reality of the secret place, he has used one blow to destroy many aspects of your life. There are many of us right now, we are, we are at a crossroad. Listen, when you go to the secret place, you don't come out till you come out with answers. Many of us go to the secret place. We are not desperate enough. God does not visit casual people. Diligently seek him. That you go back with answers and sit there and say, Lord, do you know, I read the story of Buddha. Buddha was a young Indian who was confused about life and why some things could not answer it doesn't mean i believe in him that's not what i'm saying but i'm saying buddha got angry carried notebooks and went to the secret place and said he's not coming out again until whoever is the deity of the universe explained to him the mystery of life he went there and whoever he met there and had an encounter changed his name to buddha he left there as an ordinary person he came out as buddha this is in the negative there is a way you can enter the secret place as a failure and say lord it is me and you all. i don't know what you are going to do but lord my recharge card and your god is in this room i'm not going out for your information i brought one gallon of yogurt and one gallon of juice and one bag of pure water my bathroom is there i'm not going out there must be an answer to my finances get relevant notebooks you will stay for it let me give you a side effect you will stay for a long time and not hear anything but if you have the guts to insist when he tests your resolve and see that you mean it like jacob he will come he will come he will come ask occultists the freemasons one of the things they do when they are initiating people and all of that is to hit your forehead with an object that is very painful that you can faint test your resolve do you want it that bad and they test your resolve when you are taking a student to nda sometimes from the gate as you the mother just lets the student enter from the gate someone can just kick him and say oh yeah frog jump you are watching your child doing frog jump and say mommy i want to go back and then they say don't mind him and after five years that that weak chicken like guy can go to a fuel station and harass a thief and say sit down first they don't talk i say i will beat you here you see my belt i'm a military man something happened to him sometimes we pity ourselves too much to get the answers we are looking for we are not desperate enough to stay we want cheap power cheap prosperity cheap lifting cheap influence no it doesn't work that way there is a price are you ready to pray lord grace to pay the price lift your voice and begin to pray hey. There is a prize for the anointing. There is a prize for revelation. There is a prize for direction. There is a prize for greatness. The prize is the secret place. The staying power. There is a prize for a flourishing ministry. There is a prize for a thriving business. Nekata barakato shana malika da baria da ba. Shega da balakato. Pray, Lord, I receive grace. Whatever it would take, in the name of Jesus, grace to stay. Lift your voice and pray, Koinonia. He that dwells in the secret place 
the secret place not the public place you are beautiful in all your ways you are beautiful in all your ways when i find that way it can bring glory to my life you are beautiful in all your ways. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Lord, I kill every distraction in my life. Everything that can distract me from the secret place. Everything that can distract my pace. I receive grace. Come on, pray. Shabakato sekete leva takataria. Shabrande katos kalabarakato sekete balataria. Tena mase ani arara na bash. Tena mala na bari na ba. Shena mala na dias. Sere mala na na mase na na na. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Lord, from heaven, let a fresh desire for your presence. It's not something you will do mechanically. Lord, a desire, a desire greater than my necessary food. A desire for your presence. More than a desire for, trip, for preaching. More than a desire to succeed. Plant it in my heart and let it grow. that you become my desire shabakato sabarada bashele manadara Lekete prekete leko sodo balada 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 ba. Hallelujah. Father, open up the secrets of my destiny. There is something my eyes need to see so that my generation can see me. Open up, oh God. Let the book be open. Lift your voice and pray. Pray this prayer point with all your heart. What is the secret to your anointing upon my life? What is the secret to the spirit of revelation upon my ministry? What is the secret that you are giving me for wealth and abundance? What is the secret for influence? What is the secret for favor? Let the secrets of the kingdom be unveiled to me. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. But we are still going to pray this secret prayer. Listen, we are still going to pray it again. I heard Bishop Oyedeko say this many times. That people reign in life. Not based on the secrets available. On the one God has shown them. The Lord told me something, I think it was two years ago. You know, we always teach that. The word of the Lord is powerful. Yes. But not every word of God blesses you. It is the one sent to you. Sent. There were many widows in Zarephath. But a prophet was sent to one. If Elijah met another widow, it would be disobedience. 
although he will give up breakthrough send send the word for prosperity can come for everybody but you must say send me mine send me mine it's a formula that will be added to you that will work for only you let me tell you there is an equation in every man's success equation that was customized for him you first start with the general understanding it's like occult you will be rising with it but you get to a level where god says no the principles have taken you let me now show you your own it's true it works for finances it works for ministry i was preaching somewhere and a man of god told me something he said he said pastor um, we spend so much money on publicity is it all right if we stop because i hear you don't use i said don't stop oh the general principle is that the word must be published but how it will be published is a secret god gave me i'm not saying posters are bad that's not what i'm saying but i'm just saying it was you copy it you will run your church down sir don't do it there are things god can tell you god can tell you every time enemies rise against you fast for one day and that's all it's a secret to you it may look like a stupid secret but you will stand and see your landlord vowing that if by tomorrow I, oh you see here eh, brothers and sisters when you hold these things your life almost becomes magical it's true look at jesus he had a secret they took him to a cliff all that was left is to push him and he walked through them hi there were times he parted the water but for jesus he walked on it if you were waiting for the water to part in jesus time that strategy was not it was of god but not relevant for that occasion he walked on the water and he told peter now we don't just part the water we walk on it there was something about the body of knowledge revealed to the people then that could only allow god give them miracles by passing through water but now he said you can walk on it an angel appeared to me and he told me that there shall be no loss an angel why are you confident like this paul an angel appeared to me already it's not because i'm not human i've seen something and they were taken safely to an island called melita there is something you see people can be ranting up and down oh don't worry my deep. that's why sometimes when people send me text messages apostle i saw an attack on your life they may be right but sometimes i just laugh it over boy this man standing before you is surrounded by mysteries like chariots there is what you must do the moment they tell you oh somebody is about to attack your life and destiny do you know what to do is there a formula god gave you that you get up and say lord this is it and you manipulate life from the secret place and come out to your shock thanks be to god who always causes us to triumph and makes through our life the savour of the knowledge of the glory of god what you know in life listen matters we're rounding up in this kingdom who doesn't like you is no problem but who likes you matters who doesn't like you is not a problem but who likes you matters there are many people who are praying that god should clear them out of the way they can't be cleared they are standing there by a covenant that even god respects they have become gates to a system the way you pass through is to tell God to touch their heart to like you. Praying that they get up is a foolish thing. Are we together? You may have a vice chancellor or a head of department or a dean. He may not be very born again. But that man sows a seed to a dangerous man of God. Who has already spoken and said no one will fight you. So you will fight that man and the word on him will fight you back. And you are wondering why is this guy so unbelieving yet immune because a word is over him and if god gives you intelligence he says look this man on his own can die in one day from your prayer but he was wise enough to find an anointing that shields him because of that what you need to pray is favor and he said lord grant me favor and the man says i don't know why i just like you come 
there are people you don't cast away you pray that God will touch their heart for your sake not everything is castable you couldn't cast Caesar away you could just pray that God will make a man touch him to release the body of Jesus are we blessed father in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for your people my duty is to expose your people by your inspiration to the mysteries of the kingdom both that which you have granted to walk in my life and that which is accessible in this kingdom Lord I pray that much more than the hearing of the ear may the word be sent to the destinies of your people in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for you right now that an unusual grace for the secret place an unusual grace for retreats an unusual grace to spend time alone with God let it be released to your life let there be a restoration of your first love for God a restoration of your passion for prayer revival in your life if you once walked in any dimension of grace and the anointing and for some reason it has gone down i pray for you that from tonight let the ambers let the let let the coals of the spiritual fire within your life be set back ablaze in the name of jesus and i'm praying this prayer for you this prayer of secrets lord we dedicate this week from now till the next koinonia meeting on friday lord let men beginning from tonight may they see and hear strange things about their destiny for many of you i declare strange angelic encounters they will come to your room they will come on your bed they will come to your ears some of you will continue koinonia in your dreams god will use my face to speak mysteries to you answer puzzles in your life business mysteries be unveiled leadership mysteries be unveiled ministerial mysteries be unveiled the secret to the new dimension of relevance be released to you the secret to dislodge the powers that fight your family may they be revealed to you in dreams and visions hallelujah lord let it be by the spirit of the living god let everyone who came for tonight's meeting be introduced to very deep encounters in the name of jesus christ please don't miss next week's meeting you're here for the first time okay let's let's do the altar call keep standing everyone there are people here we're not even talking of the secret place there are people here in the main auditorium the overflows and so many watching online you are here and just like we emphasized the starting point of any believers journey is an encounter with Jesus you are here and you're saying man of God I cannot say for sure that I am in Christ right now seated or standing where i am and there are others saying man of god i love the lord with all my heart but for some reason the way my life has gone i need your mercy and i need your help oh lord wherever you are we we have just two minutes for that, that please leave your seat very boldly and come and meet me here in front i want to pray for you it will be my pleasure to lead you to Jesus. Aside from overflow three that I would just request to walk to the front of your projector stand, those in overflow one and two outside and in the main bowl here, you are giving your life to Jesus Christ, rededicating your life wherever you are. Walk to the front now. God bless you. People are coming. Let's appreciate them, Koinonia. Don't sit back when you should come out. Don't sit back when you should come out. God bless you. Someone has to be answering this call. You're saying, Apostle, thank you for making this decision. I've been waiting for someone to make this decision. Make your way to the front. Keep standing. You don't have to kneel. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. If you're coming, please double up quickly. Quickly. Can God give me a new beginning, Apostle? Absolutely. Make your way to the front.
This is a place where you obtain his mercy and his grace to help in time of need. Hallelujah. If you're joining them, please come very quickly. I'm about to pray. I'm about to pray. If you're coming, come quickly. Those coming from outside, please clear the way for them. You're coming, come very quickly. Those of you standing here, I congratulate you. Thank you for your courage and everything. Lift your right hand and say after me very boldly and seriously. Please mean it from your heart. You're not just reciting a poem. Jesus is here. Say, Lord Jesus. Say it again, Lord Jesus. I believe in you that you are the son of God tonight I come before you just as I am I declare that I receive you as my Lord and my Savior the power of Satan of sin of hell is broken forever over my life and the life of God is mine today I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life in Jesus name keep your hands lifted Lord I thank you for these precious brothers and sisters they have responded to your call and they have come truthfully from their hearts Lord I pray that you accept these precious ones those who are rededicating their lives those who are handing their lives over to you for the first time Lord, we desire that they be planted, that they flourish, that they excel. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you receive them and by your spirit, transform them into supernatural people. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that from today, the power of God is resident within your life and you begin to hunger after spiritual things. In the name of Jesus amen and amen congratulations please follow the lady waving her hands there's a lady waving her hands all of you please in concert just follow the gentleman and the lady waving their hands there'll be a group of people to receive you god bless you let's honor them as they go thank you thank you hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching